You can never learn too much about LCD, length, circumference, and depth. It's time to dig deeper into these concepts today on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible in part by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years with innovations in sewing, embroidery, and quilting. Learn more at HusqvarnaViking.com. American and Eford, innovators of thread for all your sewing needs, makers of Intressa sewing thread. Learn more at SilhouettePatterns.com. Elliott Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics. ElliottBermanTextiles.com. talk about LCD. Hopefully you know what that stands for, but if not you will by the end of this little segment here that we're doing. But the very first thing and the reason we're at the sewing machine is because before we can even talk about LCD and explain what it is, we really have to deal with muslins and we're going to make a muslin and I want to make sure you just understand the terminology and what we're saying and what we're doing. So all a muslin is, is literally a trial run of the pattern and it checks the length, the circumference, the depth of your body versus pattern. Remember, the body's never wrong. The pattern is always wrong so that we can adjust the changes that need to be made in the muslin and not have to worry about them in the final garment. And the reason that is is because there are sometimes there's changes that we make or want to make and we can't do them to the final cloth and we'll go over what that is. But first, let's just talk about what is a muslin. It is a trial run, we said that. Then secondly, if we are doing a knit garment, we need to do a knit muslin. Again, it doesn't need to be muslin. It just simply needs to be any fabric that is similar to the final result we're making. So I always try, especially if I'm doing a knit, I really try to do a fabric that stretches similarly to my final product. So if I do have something that has a lot of stretch, I'd want to make a muslin that has a lot of stretch. If I have a woven as my final product, I'd have a woven. You can use anything. You can use old sheets around your house that you no longer need. Anything works as a muslin. So here's a couple things, and I've learned this from women coming to class, having made a muslin, and seeing what they've done and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it's not necessary to spend a long, long, long time on muslins. But there are a few markings that we'll want to have. We want to mark center front. We want to mark center back. The reason is so that when we close this together, we'll know where to pin together because center fronts need to come together. We'll want to sew in the darts. We'll want to leave extra seam allowance because in case we need it, we don't want to have to make an entire new muslin again. We simply can let out the seams that we want to. In this case, I've made the seam allowances a little larger than they normally would be. Normally, they'd be 3 8 I added an additional 5 8 to them, so we've got a 1-inch seam allowance along the side. If you get a little nervous that you need more than that, you can, you can add more, but don't move your stitching line. You want to keep your stitching line where it should be on the tissue so that you can tell what you have and what you need and the difference between. So on this, a couple things on my sewing machine that I'm going to do. I have turned my machine to baste, and you should baste. And by baste, what I mean is I went to 5.0. And that really works the very best, because remember, I, I'm going to want to take this apart, or I possibly might need to take it apart. So I'm, again, stitching my one inch seam allowances because I may need them. And we'll find in this particular case, I'm definitely going to need them because we did a few tricks so that you could see what happens when the muslin isn't correct. So we wanted you to follow along with that. Remember when I did this, or I, the, the whole purpose in me doing this was that you could see that I did not backstitch. That's a really bad habit among a lot of home sewers. No backstitching in the beginning and basting. I usually generally use a contrasting thread, so it's really easy to follow what's real and what's not. You don't need both sleeves, but I would definitely do one sleeve 
And when we get into the whole draping part, I'll show you when to use a sleeve. I wouldn't sew it in. Remember, a muslin is not a test to see if the pattern is correct. So it's not a test to see if the sleeve will fit into the armhole. It's simply um, a test to check the length, the circumference, and the depth. So having made our muslin, center fronts marked, backs marked. In this particular case, I did a few other things that I typically would not do in a muslin. And that was I surged the neck edge. I've got a serger, I love a serger. I used it because the neck is biased and because we handle it a lot, sometimes it gets overhandled. If you're making a, a muslin, it's really not necessary to do that. Again, in this case, I just did it, but everything else is stitched together. I don't need to mark grain line. I can get grain line off the center front. Again, we'll talk about that. Um, but don't overmark this. So many times I think we really, really mark it way too much and we spend too much time on that. So that's why I really want this to happen quickly so that we can move on to draping, which is what we're going to do right now. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is I just want to review L, C, and D, what those are and what they mean. And L, C, D is, is, stands for the length, the circumference, and the depth. And when the length circumference and depth of the garment matches the length circumference and depth of my body, then that's what we define great fit as. So again, let me just say that again. Great fit is when the length circumference and depth of the pattern matches the length circumference and depth of me. I'm not gonna change me, I'm gonna change the pattern. I'm gonna change the tissue. That's a very easy thing to do. So let's start with L, length. Length is the very first thing we're gonna deal with when we're draping. And the reason we deal with that first is because there's many times that if the lengths are in the wrong place, it affects the circumference. Remember that lengths only go up or down. I only have three lengths, base the neck to bust, bust to waist, waist to hip. The bust can only go up or down, and if the bust in the front goes up or down, there's no bust in the back, but the back has to go up or down to match accordingly. The waist, if it goes up or down in the front, it does the same thing, and same with the hip. So all these things, all it can do is either go up or down. If you have a problem and you look at it and you can't fix it by going up or down, it's not a length problem. Circumference is actually how we pick out our pattern. And circumference goes around. Circumference is our sizing. Circumference is how we pick out our garment by. Circumference in ready to wear is size four, size six times 22. Instead of saying how many inches, we actually assign a number to that, but all of them are all what we call circumference. And so the circumference merely goes around. And it's generally thought of horizontal because we either let out or we take in. We let out or we take in. It's important as we talk about circumference, sometimes as sewers, I think it's more of an advantage to talk about inches. How many inches we like at our bust, how many inches we like at our hems, and that way we simply can have a really a better reference point. Our depth then is probably our least understood concept when we talk about fit. And that depth gives us an ability to alter length and to alter circumference because our depth is angular. So when we have an uneven length, it becomes depth. When we have an uneven circumference, it becomes depth as well. But we always drape in this order because one affects the other and we want minimal effect from one to the other. So as we drape, we continue to go over the length, circumference, and depth. Now, this is gonna get a lot more fun. We're gonna look at these two t-shirts here and we're gonna see that if we look at this particular garment, because not all garments have length, circumference, and depth. This one in particular has no lengths. And many of you, when you see this, you say, wait a minute, yes it does, it's X number of inches long. But when we're talking lengths, we're talking internal lengths. So it'd be the base of the neck to bust, bust to waist, waist to hip. So if we look at this particular garment, what we see is the garment, it doesn't indicate where that bust should come in the garment. So the bust could be anywhere. The bust could be down here, it doesn't matter. So there is no point on the garment that aligns to the body that the, indicates the length from the base of the neck to the bust. There's no waist. So this garment actually has no lengths. It has circumference, every garment has circumference, but it has no depth as well. It has no darting. So if I took this off the mannequin, and laid it flat onto the table, 
We're gonna kind of zip this up a little bit. What we would see, because there's no depth in the garment, remember that once I put depth into the garment, the garment lays completely flat. So I'm gonna just lay this down on the table, and what I see is that garment lays completely flat. Literally, I could take a piece of paper and trace all around it because there's no depth to the garment at all. So when we take a flat object and put it on our bodies, and if there's not depth built into this, then we get what we had on the mannequin, which is a whole bunch of wrinkles. Let's actually put it back on the mannequin here for just a minute, if I can manipulate the zipper to do what I want it to do. Let's put this back just for a minute. And what we saw was because it's flat and the mannequin's not, or we're not, we're always going to get a little bit of wrinkling that happens around the bust area. And what that wrinkling is, is it's um, us wanting to take away fabrics, to take away length. But because that length's not the same all the way across, we call that depth, we call it a dart. So we wanna take away more here, and it tapers to nothing here. And what that dart does is it actually shortens the side of the garment while it keeps the main part of the body longer. If we notice there's a little wrinkling here, we can pick this up, and again, that's depth because it's shoulder angle. It tapers to nothing here, and between those two, we can shorten the side of the garment while leaving the, the middle of the garment longer like we need it. This one doesn't have any gapping because it has a dart, and that dart's taking away length at the side, therefore it makes it a line from pattern to body. All right, so we're gonna do some real live draping here. Now we're gonna bring on Jeannie. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drape physically a knit garment. So in this particular case, we pick it out by circumference. Whenever we do a muslin, we always pick circumference. And circumference is gonna be based on how stretchy that knit is. So in this particular case, Jeannie decided she wanted this particular circumference. And that's how we pick the size. Now keep in mind, if you didn't do it right, you can always change it. But she likes the circumference that she's got. And so we'll leave the circumference alone and we'll start at the top, we'll start draping the length. So the only two questions that you have to ask yourself is, is the bust in the right place and is the waist in the right place? And in both of these cases, the bust, there's no problem with that. So there's no lengthening or shortening the bust. In order to tell the waist, Jeannie, I'm gonna make you dizzy here, we should always turn it around and look at the back. And with the waist, I don't see any problem there as well. These problems are diagonal. So anytime we have diagonal wrinkles, those are diagonal answers. And those diagonal answers are darts. So we're not gonna do anything to that. The waist looks good. Remember, it's a knit. Okay, so let's turn it around again. I have length okay, circumference is okay, and I'm gonna tweak and do some little depth issues, and I'm gonna fix and get rid of these wrinkles. And anytime we have wrinkles that accumulate there, we've learned that it's actually not the armhole's fault, but it's the shoulder angle that is the wrong angle. It's more square, she's more sloped. So I'm gonna pick this up, and then we'll show you how to fix the tissue here in a little bit. And then I could also make the dart a little bit larger. And by making that dart a little bit larger, you actually don't have to start here, it's nothing wrong there, but it's the amount that's being taken out from the side of the garment needs to be a little bit more. And a good guide for you to always watch is to make sure the hem of the garment is straight. If the hem of the garment is not, if it hikes up in the front, then that's telling you you need to take more away from the side. So you can kind of watch the bottom and see that it's straight and, and that will tell you how much to take away from the side and keep going until, like I said, that, that hem hangs straight. All right, very good. Sometimes you will get lines here when the circumference is a little bit taut. In this particular case, it is, but I'm okay with that. And it's somewhat a look and if you want those to go away completely, you'll wanna add a little more circumference I'm gonna pull this up a little bit more just to kind of minimize that, and then we're good. With a sleeve, let's talk about this for a little bit because I get a lot of questions about sleeves, especially with a knit sleeve or with a one-piece sleeve, and people are always saying, oh, there's wrinkles, there's wrinkles, how do I get rid of those wrinkles, and you don't. On a one-piece sleeve, it's really accepted that there's wrinkles, you ignore them, and you move on. I've not ever seen a knit garment that has a two-piece sleeve. The two-piece sleeve is the way we get rid of these wrinkles. So you just, you don't do it. You just let them go, you ignore them, you make the rest look great, and we're good to go. So she's gonna change, we're gonna do a couple more drapings, but what I want you to notice is where we changed was is the angle of the shoulder, 
And then we also change the size of the dart because I want to go back to the tissue and show you how to change those. In fact, while she's changing, let's do that. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is bring this tissue up and I change that armhole. Oh, I changed it about a half an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and mimic the same thing on this tissue. I'm going to bring it down a half an inch and then I'm simply going to, I'm going to put a piece of paper under there. I'm simply going to redraw that angle back to the original line. Okay, so I've got that change there. Now remember that we just talked about in the last show we were doing about our magic armholes. So I don't even need to worry that I'm changing the armhole at all. All I do is I come in with my knit armhole, I place where it goes here, I place where it goes at the side, and if you notice I'm a little bit lower, so I would bring the side seam up, I would draw on my magic knit armhole and my sleeve automatically fits. I don't need to worry about why or what happened or anything like that. I simply lay it on from my new start point and then I'm good to go. All right, I would do the same in the back. I would also bring down the half inch, redraw the line, put my magic armhole on there and I'd be ready to go. Let's look at this dart. We changed this dart down here just briefly. When I do this, um, I, wanna, I wanna look at this um, knit just for a second. And what I would want to do and the purpose of, of making this muslin is so that I can really get to how much did I change the dart by. You can see that this wouldn't be something I would want to measure. How do I measure the difference of the center to the side and all that? But the fabric and draping that fabric tells me exactly what to do and how much to make it. And if I measure that, I can see it's about 3 8 inch and then tapers to nothing at the point. So I can just simply come to the pattern and come 3 8 inch to the side of that dart and then to nothing at the point. So just redraw it on this side, redraw it on this side. Then what I want to do is because I have made that dart larger and so I've made the side seam shorter, I want to make the back seam shorter as well and that way the side seams will still match. Don't go in and lengthen that side seam because you don't need to do that. The whole reason it was wrong at the bottom was because the dart was not the right size. So in correcting the dart, don't add it back to the bottom. Take it off the back. Okay, so let's drape another one. Now we're gonna move to a woven, and I want you to see a, a few differences that woven and knits present to themselves. This pattern is, again, she's marked center front, so I'm gonna close it up on her. We, we put a little t-shirt under here. I don't, I wouldn't do that. We just did it so that Jeannie felt a little protected. <laughs> but um, there's no reason to do it if you're at home. You'd want to just do it with whatever garments you wear under your blouse. If you look at our muslin, remember that we literally just mark the center front and then that's all you need to do. Now I had her sew in one sleeve so that we could see what that sleeve looks like. I think it's a little easier to sew it without the sleeves, um, get the clean fit, and then you can go back and put in sleeves if you want. But remember this is a one piece sleeve. We're gonna have the twist. We're not even going to worry about that. The only thing we're going to worry about the sleeve is whether it has enough circumference and she has enough mobility to be comfortable. But let's look at the blouse. Let's look at the blouse body and I'm going to, let's focus on this side. All right, so length first. Remember it's base the neck to bust, bust to waist, waist to hip. I don't see any problem with this area and where the bust garment and body match. So I'm okay with length. Now, again, if I went to the back, and because I've done this a few times before, I know that that's not length. I actually know it's depth. It's a sway back and it's gonna come in later. Um, I would probably try to change that. And if you tried to change that, and if you took the same amount out all the way around, you'd find that the problem just would reoccur because it's not a length issue. So there's nothing wrong with trying to fix it. You'll just find that the, if the fix doesn't work, then you just pick the wrong solution. And there's only three solutions, length, circumference, depth. So I'm gonna say the length is okay. We're gonna to go to circumference. The circumference is okay. We really did that. The bust could maybe use a little more, but I don't think it's the bust. Again, I think it's because we've got this little t-shirt on underneath it that we didn't consider. All right, so circumference, we're gonna be okay. Then let's go through and fine tune all the little issues. You notice there's a little gapping there. That is depth. Anytime you've got a gap that's here and not here, you know that's depth. So I'm gonna pick this up. So I'm gonna increase the angle of the shoulder. If you're using one pattern company and you're having a tendency to see that that fix needs happening, you could really compare it to the next tissue and we're gonna do that here in a minute. But that way I could kind of 
predict that. You can do this after the garment's made, so it's not a big deal, and it's a very easy fix. Just remember, anytime you make any change to the armhole, I wanna bring back my magic armhole and put it on, there's nothing magic about my armhole, but you know what I'm saying, uh, and put it on to make sure that the armhole gets restored back to the size it was. Okay, so now looking at depth again, you can see all these angular wrinkles that's simply caused by the shoulder angle not being correct. So once we pick that up, all of those wrinkles are eliminated. All right, all this wrinkling in the back here, if you notice the wrinkling is angular, and anytime you have angular wrinkling, that's when you know it's a depth issue. This particular is a sway back. I'm gonna make the fix above the back, above the waist. If you make it at the waist, it doesn't have, it, it doesn't show as nicely. So I'm gonna do it a little bit above the waist. And remember, because it's a depth issue, it's a horizontal, it's a horizontal dart here. And the horizontal dart the horizontal dart is actually going to taper to nothing at the side. All right, so there we go. Simply, and again, it's easier to do it above the waist so that the waist of the garment actually is at the waist. And you can see there that that, comes, that hangs really nicely. Now I could come back in and change that circumference. If I decide I want a little less circumference, once I've got that shape right, I could go ahead and bring it in a little bit more into her body and that would give her some shaping in the back. But other than that, everything else looks really good. Um, again, check your darting here to make sure you've gotten rid of all those gapping. If not, you could actually increase that right there at that seam or you could go ahead and increase it right here. You're not gonna have this in the final garment. You've got a little princess seam and I can build it right into this princess seam. Okay, so I'm gonna steal this from Jeannie. Jeannie, you're gonna take this off and you're gonna go get another one on real quick. I wanna make sure you understand, can I help you with that? I wanna make sure you understand how to make these changes. And so Jeannie's gonna get another one on. I wanna do one more really quickly just cause we'll see a few different problems. Well, let's look at what we did to this one. Here we change the angle of the shoulder. So you measure this amount, come into the shoulder, redraw that, we did that. Um, here we did a little angle at, from the side. So when I take this angle at the side, it would just angle here, taper to nothing. In the back, same thing. I'd measure the widest point, I'd measure where it is. I'd come to the pattern, measure the widest point, it would taper to nothing. And remember, in this particular pattern, this one's not this one, but you actually are going through a seam. So go through the seam and then end there. The sway back is not something you can fix after the fabric's been cut. So that in particular is what you really wanna look for to make sure that that garment's right. Okay, so Jeannie, this is just way too much fun. I wanna do a third one because in this one now, we got a little more persnickety in that this garment has a waist to it. And so it's really important when you do something like this that you know where that is beforehand. So let's look on this side, because I certainly want that waist to be at least at her waist or above. I don't want it to be below. And in this case, we can look at her back. It's too long, and so it's pushing the top up. So what I'm gonna do is this is a lengthened issue. So we're going to literally shorten all the way. And remember when it's a lengthen or shorten, we take it all the way around the body. So I'm literally gonna do this all the way, all the way even into the front. I always use the back of the body to see the problem because the back of the body is concave. And so the back of the body is where the problems manifest themselves more than in the front of the body, especially with the waist. But you can see how much better that lays now. She still needs that shoulder seam picked up. So I'm gonna grab some more pins over here and do that. Always make sure you have plenty of pins because these are your best friends right now. So I'm gonna take that up. So I'm seeing that consistently on Jeannie. So when she goes to cut out subsequent muslins, I would just kind of watch that because that way you can kind of start to see what the pattern should look like versus what the actual garment looks like. Any wrinkling you have in here, you guys know that you can, simp well, you should continue this all the way around first. And then if you need to make any other changes, you can. 
and you can make those in the tissue. And then anything you make in the tissue, you can use this as your pattern or you could go ahead and transfer it back to the tissue. Again, I think this is easier. I think it's easier to work with. You just look gorgeous. But LCD, you know what? We can't learn enough about it. And what we really start to understand is our education ends our frustration. And so when we're having frustration, what we want to do is just go in our head over and over and over, L, C, D. Is it L, is it C, is it D? Remember that if I think that is L, and if I try to solve it with a line that goes across and it doesn't solve it, then let's not just have a nervous breakdown. We'll just say, okay, I was wrong. L's not the answer. Let's go on to the next one. So the options are only three. Remember that wrinkling in the sleeve is completely typical of what happens. You can't avoid it. What I do, and sometimes when I have a blouse on, is I'll actually use a blouse two-piece sleeve. And that way, it, especially if I'm using a heavier fabric, it just has a tendency to give me a little more shaping and a little more direction. But other than that, the one-piece sleeve is very acceptable in blouses. Many times we're doing them in silk. And so it's very lightweight and you really don't see the wrinkling because the, the fabric itself is so soft. So it looks great. You look great. The blouse looks great. LCD. Over and over and over. We can't know enough about it. LCD is our best friend. Just remember that. Coming up next time, we're going to talk to the fabric. Are we listening? The fabric is speaking if we're listening. Join us next time. Visit fittostitch.com for all of the patterns and instructions found on today's show, plus more tutorials, webcasts, and techniques from this season of Fit to Stitch. This is show 203. If you enjoyed today's show and want to learn more about fitting with Peggy Sagers, a DVD set of all 13 episodes of Fit to Stitch season 200 is available at fittostitch.com for $49.99 plus shipping. Fit to Stitch is made possible in part by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years with innovations in sewing, embroidery, and quilting. Learn more at HusqvarnaViking.com. American and Eford, innovators of thread for all your sewing needs, makers of Intressa sewing thread. Learn more at SilhouettePatterns.com. Elliott Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics. ElliottBermanTextiles.com.